Members of the class of 2022, faculty, parents, distinguished graduates, guests, and friends, welcome to the 134th Annual Commencement Exercises of Canandaigua Academy. Please rise for the National Anthem. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the Thank you to our senior vocal students for that beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. We are back here at CMAC after a two-year hiatus to Bristol Mountain, thanks to COVID. Yay! In order to successfully get to commencement, these students have worked hard for the past 18 years. But they did not do so alone. Many people, from parents and teachers, grandparents and coaches, among others, helped these graduates get here today. I would like the members of the class of 2022 to please stand up, look around at those who are here in the audience, and those joining us live stream today that have helped you along the way. Let's take a moment to thank them for their support and dedication that helped you on your graduation from Canandaigua Academy by giving them a round of applause. Please stand, class of 2022. Find them and thank them. <laughs> Today is a great day for a celebration. As we begin this festive and memorable ceremony, we would like to celebrate two members of the class of 2022 who are with us today only in spirit. Rather than a moment of silence, let's celebrate the lives of our classmates, Annalise Pelton and Morgan Shar. Please put your hands together for their honor. The class of 2022, as the yearbook theme states, is better together. This class has proven this point. They've gone through so much these last few years, sent home to do school entirely from home, a year of hybrid schooling, only coming to school two days a week, and then finally coming together. This was the best year for the class of 2022. It started with the most beautiful sunrise at their senior sunrise and it ended with a bright pink sunset at their senior sunset. They say, pink sky at night, sailors delight. This is a sign of their years to come, delightful, adventurous, and smooth sailing. This class is ready. I can't wait to see how their journey pans out. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce our first student commencement speaker, Jonathan Miller. Well, hello. Uh, I know there are going to be a lot of thank yous in the speeches following this, so I'll just give a shout out to the people. You probably know who you are already, but uh, thank you for making this 
okay. And uh, got a disclaimer, before you ask me for autographs after this amazing speech, I uh, unfortunately won't be available. I got up really early for this. I gotta go take a nap afterwards. And I know it also seems like I have this whole thing memorized. I don't, I'm just built different. Uh, I wanna preface this speech by saying that I'm really sarcastic. Like, quite sarcastic. Uh, it's a big problem for me in life. My parents can't tell when I'm sarcastic. My girlfriend can't tell when I'm sarcastic, neither can my friends. And uh, I've learned to integrate sarcasm into my normal speech so well that uh, it can't be distinguished half the time. So, to prevent any unwanted misunderstandings, whenever I uh, spice up this speech with a pinch of paprika and a tablespoon of sarcasm, I will uh, let you know. And another note, uh, everybody always tells you to talk slowly when you take a speech. And even though I took a uh, extra dose of anxiety medication in preparation for this event, um, I'll probably talk as fast as my brain is moving. So, probably like Mach 10. But um, here, I'll, I'll practice slowing things down. Is this better? Okay. So speaking of speed, I'd uh, like to take a look at a racetrack for a minute. In case anyone doesn't have an idea of what those look like, I'll uh, provide a little description. They all vary slightly, so uh, I'll just call this one the CA Racing Circuit. Uh, the start finish line comes first, followed by the main straight. There's a uh, sharp right hand turn at the end of the straight, followed by a slightly bending right turn. There's a, a chicane at the end of that. For those who don't know what that is, a chicane is a series of tight turns in opposite directions, kind of like uh, right angles. Uh, then that's followed by the back straight. Quick right, quick left, follow that, then another right. There's a long sweeping left, followed by another chicane, and another right, another left, and we're across the finish line. So uh, freshman year, that was our main straight. Depending on who you were, you were either super excited or super scared to get going. Uh, personally, I was a mix of both, but I assume that's probably normal for everyone. Uh, your pit crew, teachers, family, friends, are there for you, and they'll uh, help you get around that track. Freshman year was our start. We uh, lined up at the grid and waited for the lights to go out before putting our foot to the floor. We tried our hand and uh, sometimes failed at new activities and kept participating in the ones we loved since middle school and before that. We lost some friends, I know I did, and uh, we made many new ones as well. Classes weren't too bad. We kept racing despite, you know, bump in the road here and there. You're supposed to laugh, it was a pun. And that, that, that was sarcasm, don't worry. Um, after that big breaking zone at the end of the straight, because you know you can't go into a turn too fast, uh, we accelerated into sophomore year. And there were different classes, you know, we felt at home on the track. A little flick of the steering wheel, a little throttle input, and we were through that curving turn. And you guys cannot sit here and tell me you didn't have fun playing with the Bunsen burners in chem. Uh, there, it was a, a lab for burning food. And I know not all of you are pyromaniacs, but come on. You can't get better than burning stuff in class. I don't do anything crazy. I just launch rockets and play with engines and cars and things. I don't blow up stuff. I think that, close, that class was as close as you can get to uh, heaven, just because of the fire. Uh, shout out to Durham if he's here, whose jokes add to the atmosphere, and probably got a little annoyed with my antics regarding the Bunsen burners as well. Sorry. So uh, here we are, cruising around that curving turn when it starts to rain. And we're on dry tires just as we get to that first chicane. And we turn the steering wheel to make it around, but uh, there's not enough grip from our tires. It's a wet track, we got dry slicks. The uh, car slides, we spin out, and we hit a wall. I think that date was March 13th, maybe? I mean, I know I was just about to perform my sophomore year musical, and like, psh, mama mia, Jesus. But you know, you can't keep racing with a broken race car. You don't need to know racing to know that. The uh, red flag came out, you know, that stopped the race, and we gingerly drove back to the pits for our car to get repaired. That repair indeed uh, took the rest of sophomore year. It sucked. Uh, we were stuck at our houses, getting on Zooms, or not, depending on who you were, and doing our work, or not, depending on who you were. I won't judge either way. But I'm sure enough has already been said regarding that uh, COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, and the race has to resume, so I'll uh, move on from that. And junior year started with the track still wet. Even though it's not raining, the track's still wet, hasn't dried yet. 
During the pit stop, our uh, pit crew fitted wet tires so we had more grip, but we nevertheless had to drive slowly as to not spin out again. Also, I will concede it's hard for the engine to make peak horsepower when the amount of air it can get is restricted by a mask covering the air intake. Now, there's a really good opportunity here. I could say our race car is now a hybrid because, you know, but I think that would take a major redesign of the car. And if I keep talking for much longer, this speech is going to be the longest in history. I think I've already beaten President Lincoln. Uh, those turns in the second half of the track were challenging, I will admit. We had a bunch of AP and IB exams, regents, uh, lots of homework and social lives to maintain. Just don't even worry about the sleep schedule. I think it was non-existent at that point. And it's also quite hard to race when you're only in the driver's seat two days a week. You know, that'll ruin your lap time as well. But uh, we navigated those turns. We persevered through the lack of grip. It's a grad speech, I have to say, persevered at least once. And we kept on racing. And now, look at this, our lap is almost done. Track is dried. Our pit crew gave us a set of new dry tires. So now we have even more grip. We've uh, driven around those turns, cut through the final chicane. And when we process across this stage, get our diplomas and walk off, we will have passed the finish line and we'll be on to the next race. But you know what? Our lap time was horrible. We took so much time to get around that course. It felt like forever. But uh, one race doesn't even determine a driver's career or how the driver's season will go. I don't know who of you have seen Rush. I think it's a 2013 movie about uh, the 1976 Formula One World Championship. But uh, it's about Nicky Lauda, who was a Formula One driver racing for Ferrari at the time. And he crashed horrifically at the Nürburgring in Germany. And he sat in a burning car for 55 seconds. His, uh, he had massive third degree burns. His lungs were filled with smoke and ash. He actually had to have uh, face reconstruction surgery that stretched his skin across his face because of the uh, burns he had from the accident. He was pulled out of the burning wreckage by his fellow drivers, and he was in the hospital for 40 days, missing all the races of that season. And yet, despite being injured for that long, he only lost the world championship by a point. He was beaten by a guy who raced every single race and won nearly all of them while he was in hospital, and he still only lost by a point. And he went on to win the 77 championship by a considerable margin. So even though this lap wasn't the greatest, uh, that doesn't determine how fast we'll be in college. You know, it'll be a new racetrack, a different layout maybe, but we're experienced racers. We've battled through inclement weather, a lack of grip, crashes, new driving styles, and just slow, slow, slow pit stops. Valtteri Bottas, I'm talking about you. But we, uh, we cross the line regardless. One lap doesn't determine our future. The way we drive after it does. The race, our race, our lives are far from over. So let's keep our foot hard down on the throttle, no brakes, and accelerate into the next adventure. Thank you, Jonathan. Well done. It's now my pleasure to introduce our second student commencement speaker, Ethan Rude. Hello. First, I would like to thank the class of 2022. I've genuinely enjoyed meeting all of you and growing up with you. Next, I would like to thank my teachers and coaches for always pushing me to be better. And most of all, I would like to thank my family for their unconditional love and support throughout both high school and my whole life. I love you all. All right, here we go. My stomach dropped. My feet were frozen to the floor. A giant lump formed in my throat. I could feel the lights beaming down on me and everybody staring at me. My hands started to sweat and my legs threatened to buckle. I thought back to a month before when I was sitting at my desk. My blue pen lay next to a stack of papers. I selected the list of spelling bee words and placed it on my desk. Next, I proceeded to write each word from the list five times across on a separate sheet of paper. Each row was subsequently filled with a new word from the list. At first, the pen glided across the page, creating neat and tidy letters. But as the hours progressed, my handwriting worsened. Letters started to mold together. Rows started to slant downward and much of the ink from the previous rows smudged against the back of my hand. 
A tedious task to say the least, but I felt it was the best way to prepare myself for the competition. As the eldest of three brothers, I've always felt the need to set a perfect example. In a sense, the most successful spellers are the ones who are perfect, who do not make mistakes, which is likely what drew me towards spelling bees in the first place. I practiced in ink for a reason. In the end, my strategies proved mostly successful. I won numerous spelling bees in various levels of competition, but I did not win them all. I misspelled a few words over the years, and each time I would hear the awful ding of the bell, signaling that I had failed and now must exit the stage. Every time I heard that bell, I felt like my dreams had been shattered. All of my hard work and dedication had gone to waste. The hours upon hours that I had devoted to studying had been thrown away because I had made a single careless mistake. As a perfectionist, these were the thoughts that overwhelmed my mind as I made my way off stage. Even off the stage, I feared that I would hear the wretched ding of the bell, but not necessarily for spelling errors. I got into the mindset that people would think less of me because my mistakes made me less of a person. It was not until a few years later, after I was no longer eligible to participate in spelling bees, that I had my epiphany. I used to think that striving for perfection would bring me the greatest success, but rather I found it to be the greatest limiting factor in my life. While trying to be perfect, I spent the majority of my time memorizing a long list of words and trying to finish first, rather than actually learning new words and developing a deeper appreciation for the English language. I no longer fear the bell, for I no longer strive to be perfect. Instead, I strive to be the best version of myself. This newfound feeling gave me freedom, freedom to experiment, freedom to fail, freedom to try again. No successful person ever went their whole life without making a mistake, so why should I or any of us hold ourselves to such an unrealistic standard? People who make mistakes push the limits of their imagination, innovate new ideas, and ultimately change the world. Whether there's a new sport that you want to try, a club you want to join, or a job opportunity that you want to pursue, getting out of your comfort zone allows you to grow. Our mistakes may reveal our weaknesses, but they also provide directions in finding ways to improve ourselves. So with that, I challenge all of you to continually find a way to grow and become the best version of yourself. Thank you for your time and congratulations once again to the class 2022. Thank you, Ethan. Nice job. It is now my pleasure to introduce our third student commencement speaker, Sarah Windover. Thank you, Mrs. Logue. I'm honored to be speaking to you all today. We are here, and I could not be more proud of us. As you know, we have faced many challenges in just these two last years. Doing hard classes on Zoom or only hearing a live lesson twice a week are only a couple of the struggles we have faced, but we did it. We have faced every obstacle thrown at us. There's a reason as to why I think we're able to do this and why, to the outsiders, it looks so easy. It is something my mom and I like to call Canadagua kind. Kindness is defined as being considerate and friendly to others. It'll make sense in a minute, so hang on. I moved here in the sixth grade from a very small school. Our class size now, 240, is the size of my district then. I'm sure you can understand the anxiety I had starting here just knowing that. Really though, my anxiety wasn't how am I gonna meet all these people, it was how am I gonna remember all of your names? I know I was cute like that. But for those of you who know me, you know I'm terrible with names. I was terrified the whole summer leading into sixth grade. But then when that first day came up, I was shocked. You were all so kind. Walking into advisory, our favorite days were the Thursday reading days, someone instantly invited me to sit with them at the, their table and I'd like I'd been friends with them for years. Then lunch came. Usually, lunchtime is the scariest part of anybody's first day, but that can I get it a kind prevented that from happening. My stomach didn't even have time to drop in the fear of where will I sit. As I turned around with my food, someone had already invited me to sit with them at their table. I came home that day grinning ear to ear, telling my mom that everyone, even the custodians, were so kind. That is when we labeled it the Canadagua kind. You all went out of your way to help someone being considerate of how they might feel on their first day and shared a friendly face in the halls. 
some of you might be thinking that throughout the years, there has been some drama clouding the Canandaigua kind. But take a look at what we do for each other. We write cards to teachers and sign posters to say thank you. We go to as many games, musicals, plays, and concerts as we can, supporting our sports and music departments. Our One Braves family helped create a mental health walk to raise money and awareness on an important matter. When classes were on Zoom, or only Tuesdays a week, we all hated it. Um, some, but we shared what we did with our free time since we couldn't leave our house. Some baked, many watched TikToks, others made TikToks. We got really good at a skill, um, like skating in the house when mom wasn't looking. Sorry, mom. We struggled, but we struggled together. We all shared what we did in the hopes to help someone else get through it too. No matter the clique, anyone who wanted to join was welcome in the fun activities like the homecoming events. There are so many more examples of these too. This is your Canandaigua kind shining through. We care. Because of this, I know that we will go far. Kindness is our secret weapon when it comes into going into the working world. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you, Sarah, nice job. At the Senior Awards Ceremony on June 15th, we distributed over $77,000 in awards and scholarships to seniors. We recognize the academic, athletic, and character accomplishments of the students of the class of 2022. I now ask that we acknowledge those seniors who received awards and scholarships. Seniors who won an award or scholarship, please rise and remain standing as we congratulate you for your achievements. Please rise if you've received an award or a scholarship. Our congratulations are extended to you for your outstanding achievements. At this time, I would like to recognize those students entering the United States military. Would Caleb Ezel, Zachary Shea, and Dylan Spencer please stand? To stand with them, to please stand with them, I'd like any of you who have served or are currently serving in the United States military to also please stand with these students. Canandaigua Academy and the class of 2022 salute you for your past, present, and future service and sacrifices for our country. Thank you. You may be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce Superintendent Jamie Farr. Two thousand and nineteen. Two thousand and nineteen was the last time we held commencement right here in this beautiful location. And while commencement at Bristol Mountain was special and fun, many of us have prayed for the day we would be right here in this place at this moment. I'd like to thank the Fuller family of Bristol Mountain for accommodating us at Bristol Mountain the last two years. Can we please give them a round of applause? When we came up with that wild idea, they didn't even think twice about it, and they invited us on at no cost. I'd also like to thank the folks at CMAC, the Sands family, and Chris Tuttle for ensuring our commencement takes place in this incredible location. Can we please give them a round of applause? <laughs> Greetings and welcome, students, families, faculty, staff, and friends. Today is a celebration. It's an acknowledgement of a significant milestone reached through a collective effort of everyone in attendance and most certainly many more even beyond those who are here with us right now. 
This moment truly defines our school vision, one community transforming lives. Class of 2022, please pay close attention to the traits I'm about to share specific to two very highly successful professionals. And while these traits may have an educational slant or lean to them, it's easily applicable to all facets of life. Your journey dating way back to the first time you set foot in a classroom has witnessed a significant transformation. Not only have you changed, but our world has changed. You are ready for whatever challenge lies ahead. You've demonstrated your resilience, your character, and your ability. Our world needs courageous and driven leaders, and I look forward to watching you become just what our society needs. Today, in each commencement, I have the honor and privilege of presenting the John Wilcox Award. Mr. Wilcox was most known for his time as a Canandaigua Academy principal from 1967 to 1986. Before that, Mr. Wilcox was an awarded athlete, a class president, a merchant marine who was selected to carry the colors in honor of General Eisenhower, a graduate of Cornell University, and a math teacher and school counselor by trade. In a book written about and dedicated to Mr. Wilcox, compiled by Gary Dixon, it begins as such, great, awesome, amazing, the best, respected, down to earth, wonderful, fantastic, fair, honorable, and a friend. A person described in such a manner, having a deep and lasting impact on our school community, it's fitting that an award is named in his honor. And that award ought to be given to someone on our staff who exemplifies the same qualities. It's also said that Mr. Wilcox had a reputation for fairness, giving students and staff a second chance, providing wise counsel and a listening ear, and that these traits are largely what earned him so much respect and love from those who knew him. The collective effort mentioned earlier, which helped all of our graduates make it to this point, can, can come in the form of family or friends, but it also comes in the form of adults working in our schools. This is why Mr. Wilcox believed that to raise children properly, it actually does take a whole village. Mr. Wilcox always put students first. He honored their individuality and celebrated their successes. He believed that students and families must know that staff cares about them and that all students can succeed. Mr. Wilcox understood that students thrive when structure, rules, and discipline are consistent and evident regardless of who a person is. He was widely known as being tough but fair. Mr. Wilcox passed away in December of 2008 and at that time, the Canandaigua City School District established this, their most prestigious award for staff. The award winner receives an original painting this year created by senior Kate Scabelli. Kate, if you want to stand, if you recognize. And I showed it like you all could actually see it way out there. Just pretend. Um, it's a beautiful piece of artwork, though, so I know you couldn't see it, of a view of what else? The Canandaigua Lakefront, which all of us have the privilege of enjoying and finding peace and happiness at regularly. Fantastic work, Kate, as always. The winner of the Wilcox Award must be nominated by his or her peers and is ultimately selected by a confidential committee of school employees. But above all, the winner must exemplify the traits which Mr. Wilcox valued. Most often, the recipient is unaware in that they are receiving this award and they don't know until their name is announced. In fact, most often they think they're here just to take in this wonderful commencement and our award winner is actually here. Within the nomination documents, the following things were stated about this year's winner. This person is the epitome of elevated teaching. This person's popularity comes from their devotion to the simplest and most powerful tenet of teaching, taking time to listen to kids. In fact, we recently discovered that this year's recipient, in a process of moving classrooms, has accumulated two filing cabinets completely filled with notes and letters from current and former students. The recipient puts students first the moment their day begins, has a constant stream of students checking in throughout the day because of an ability to connect and find common ground and appreciation for each individual helps with clubs and activities, and encourage all students to reach their highest potential in sports, music, 
or whatever interest they effuse. Always drives the conversation to student-centered higher order learning being the crux of the department meetings and curriculum designs. This person has never turned down a colleague or student in need. Once described as a rock and roll teacher by a student, which, knowing the teacher, you know exactly what that means without elaboration. This one's my favorite. Per perpetually friendly, outgoing, and full of healthy optimism, giving anyone they encounter glowing attention. Always makes learning of high interest and intriguing. Instead of a project about boxes to hold jewelry, students create uncrackable safes. Instead of paper airplanes, they create sky kings, the world record-setting airplanes. Excitement infuses everything this person does, and it makes students feel like academic titans. Students in this classroom follow the golden rule and are reminded often that this is a place to have fun, artists. When responding to a frustrated colleague recently, the recipient stated, don't let that ruin your fun. So simple, yet so profound. This year's recipient believes that our school community ought to be a place to learn and have fun, to grow and have fun, to make mistakes and have fun. He clearly exemplifies those same words used to describe John Wilcox, great, awesome, amazing, the best, respected, down-to-earth, wonderful, fantastic, fair, honorable, and a friend. I'd like to invite this year's winner on stage to receive his award and recognition. On behalf of our community, it's an honor to announce and thank our 2022 John Wilcox Award winner as none other than primary school and soon-to-be academy art teacher, Mr. Josh Mull. Thank you, Mr. Farr. Congratulations, Josh. Well deserved. We're looking forward to having you at the Academy next year. I'm pleased now to introduce the Board of Education President, Mrs. Jeannie Grimm. Welcome, Class of 2022, faculty and staff, families and friends, to an event I have always loved and loved just a little bit more this year as we've not been in this beautiful venue for the last three years. Thank you for being with us today. It's a particular honor to recognize this class. I'm about to date myself here when I mention Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, an extraordinary dance team from prehistoric times, the 1930s and 40s, Fred Astaire got all the acclaim, but Ginger Rogers once famously said, I do everything he does, but backwards and in high heels. You all have done everything every other class has done, but masked and in cohorts. So when I saw a friend's Facebook post asking for ideas for our high school graduation, I was kind of appalled at some of the suggestions, like tell them about resilience or they need grit to get through life, or my favorite, they should know that life won't always be this easy. My thought was, have you met a teenager lately? Because honestly, this class could write a book on those topics. So I struggled. This is likely the fifth version of this I've written because every time I thought I had something viable, like everything I've ever needed to know I've learned from doing squats, something heavier in the world happened and I'd become discouraged and start again. In truth, there have been a number of discouraged times in recent years when I've just wanted to stay in my house, play with my dogs, and eat peanut M&Ms. Well, in fact, there were many times in these last years when I actually did that. But I thought back to a time when my family and our dearest friends took our seven kids under the age of 10 to the Jersey Shore for a beach vacation. The trip had been a year in the making, so when I pinched a nerve in my neck, I decided being unhappy on a beach was better than being unhappy at home, and off we painfully went. By day five, the ocean breeze and the nonstop sunshine made me feel much better, so I decided to join in on the game of beach kickball. 
We divided into teams, and when it was my turn to kick, I was ready. The ball came my way. I took off at it. I pulled my leg back, ready to bring the loaded bases home, and my neck tweaked again. I barely moved the ball and got viciously thrown out by a four-year-old <laughs> before I'd taken, like, my third step. And from second base, Sam, a wildly competitive six-year-old, screamed at me, you have to at least try. Fair enough, it didn't look like much to him, but I had tried my very best in that moment. And after the last couple of years, I'm sure many of you can understand that. I wonder if you beautiful young emerging adults might have ever felt the same way and what you might have done about it. For so many of us, for me for sure, our students helped save the day. Each visit to the classroom, to a fall drama or spring musical, to athletic events, was a glorious battery recharge. But also a reminder that we, my generation, put an awful lot on you, your generation, to save a planet, a democracy, and a sense of hope. But I'm here to tell you that I have every confidence that you can and you will. You have to at least try because this is what your parents, your guardians, and your teachers have done for the last 17 years. They have taught you to fly, to dream, and to live, and you've already begun to choose how you'll do each of those. You will venture from, from Canandaigua with some unusual and maybe even unique chapters to your story. You will know where your food comes from because we're a farm and water rich community filled with people, some among you today, who fiercely protect our land and our lake. You sit in an audience with a retired board member who volunteered 20 years to your educations and who today will award diplomas to two of her grandchildren. Some of you started your UPK 12 educations with me as your Little Wings preschool teacher and will end it today with me crying when I hand you your diplomas. You will always be the class who brought the gym to its feet during your very first lip sync and maybe even have to explain to your next community what that awesome tradition is. And each time you hear the national anthem, you may have to explain why you say braves at the end when no one else does. And what will you do with all of this education and experience and tradition? How will you take some challenging times and bring meaning to them? I know that many of you already have dreams of reversing climate change, of designing life-changing biomedical devices, of becoming teachers. Do it, they are the backbone and the heart of every community. Of bringing joy to people's lives through music, of figuring it out, and you will. You are braves for a reason. You carry with you the Haudenosaunee tradition of the peacemaker, the notion that good character is everything and that trying matters. And of course, none of this happened on its own, so I'll ask one last thing of you today. Take a moment and think right now of who helped get you where you are but think very specifically about what you're grateful to them for. And before you leave here, please say thank you to at least one person. Tell a friend how much it meant to you when they checked in on you when you were having a hard day. Thank a parent for attending your events. Thank a teacher for, way, for the way they taught you to write or code or create. Thank Mr. Kane, Mrs. Chase, Mr. Perry, and Ms. Moore, and all of the musicians behind me who gave freely of their time and talent to make this an extra special day. Look someone in the eye if you are able and thank them because no one gets anywhere alone. And if it feels weird to you, I'll say this, you have to at least try. And now I will end by saying thank you. Thank you to the families who nurtured these children and turned them into the people they are today. Thank you to our faculty and staff, unparalleled, devoted, whole child champions that you are. Thank you to my board colleagues, past and present, for your generosity of time, expertise, and spirit. Thank you to our district leadership for your communication and comfort through hard times and your celebrations through joy. But most of all, thank you and congratulations to you, class of 2022.
I'd like to invite the senior choral students to come back to the stage to get ready for their next performance. I would like to thank the Board of Education, faculty and staff, and the members of the Canandaigua Academy Music Department as well, under the direction of Mrs. Diana Chase, Mr. Greg Kane, Mr. Sean Perry, and Ms. Haley Moore, for their time and talents devoted to today's commencement program. I would also like to thank Mr. Matt Rogers. He is the engineer behind making today's ceremony perfect. I appreciate his eye for the details. I would also like to extend an appreciation to the assistant principals, Mr. Eric Jordan, Mrs. Carrie Burke, and Mrs. Rachel Shading, and the Dean of Students, Mrs. Marie Windover, for all of their support throughout the school year. The seniors have had an amazing four years, thanks to their senior class advisors, Mrs. Sarah Mazur and Mrs. Marie Windover. Thank you for planning all the events and helping this class build memories that will last a lifetime. Finally, I must recognize the school counselors who have worked wholeheartedly to help our seniors get across this stage, but also helps the graduates make plans for what is next. Their connections with this class are amazing. We can't thank them enough. Thank you, Mrs. Leanne Ducharme, Mrs. Kristen Kelly, Mrs. Lisa Rounds, Mrs. Kristen Smith, and Mr. Chris Geitler. Let's give them all a round of applause. I don't want to forget Mrs. Heather Pollock, the counselor at the CACC. Sorry, Heather. <laughs> at this time, please enjoy another musical selection sung by the very talented senior vocal students here at the Academy.
That was beautiful. Thank you so much. I have chills. I would now like to share some accomplishments of the class of 2022. 111 members of the class will be attending four-year colleges, and 73 will be attending two-year colleges. 52 members of the class have obtained full-time employment, and three members of the class plan to enter the United States military. 236 members of the class will receive Regents diplomas, 130 of those are advanced regents diplomas, and 70 of those are advanced regents with honors. 27 of our graduates have received career and technical education designation, and six candidates for our, six of the students are candidates for the International Baccalaureate Diploma. Mr. Farr, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you the 134th graduating class of Canandaigua Academy. <laughs> This class has provided the school with a full measure of academic achievement, student leadership, and service to the school and community. My sincere thanks to the members of the class of 2022 for their contributions and cooperation. Audience, please refrain from applauding until all the diplomas have been conferred. Rachel E. Adams. Christine Julia Alexander. Angelina Marie Allen. Derek Stephen Andrews. Roxy Christina Appleton. Emma L. Arno. Riley James Babcock. Jack McCain Bacon.
Aaron James Bailey. Margaret Catherine Bailey. Ashley Kim Bailey. Maya Christine Bernard. Brooke L. Barnhart. Seth Russell Barone. Jacob J. Bowden. Jayanye Imani Bellamy. Matthew R. Bellis. <laughs> Samuel J. Bament. Micah Elijah Bennett. Matthew Benjamin Byer. Tucker C. Bickle. Haley Ann Birch. Brian Mitchell Boldrin. <laughs> Kyla Lucille Bolin. Mason Bennett Bolster. Samuel Reagan Book. Alexa May Bounds. Brooke Ella Bowman.
Daphne Elizabeth Bradley. Evan Michael Brown. Connor Michael Bryan. Alexis Naomi Bryan. Allison J. Book. Jesse Thomas Buck. Domenico Antonio Campagna. Bryce Andrew Saravalo. Pichayapa Chantawan. Jack Edward Chapman. Vincent Chen. Lindsay Marina Koshia. Alexander T. Colcord. Johan S. Coleman Lawrence. Ethan Ryan Kolf. Brady Joseph Camella. William Lloyd Connor in absentia. Ricasey Contreras Rodriguez. Emily Noel Cook. Lillian Catherine Cook. Dakota 
L. Coons. Jaden Raisu Corbin. Cassidy Ray Kraft. Charles F. Craver. Braden Richard Kraus. Nathan Dean Dom. Lucas James Davis. Dakota R. Davis. Kyle M. Davis. Anthony John DeBolso. Madeline May DeBrock. Benjamin Levi Deibler. James V. Del Forte. Madison Norris Depew. Genevieve E. DeVito. <laughs> Mallory Brooke Dixon. Lauren Ann Duggan. Liliana Marie Ede. Mackenzie Lynn Marie Ellis. In absentia, my apologies. Emily F. Newton. <laughs> Z. 
Zachary Allen Enos. Tyler Stefan Everts. Caleb Andrew Ezel. Gordon Emuel Fackelman. Randy Gage Fenton. Nicholas Matthew Ferris. Jack Ryan Flansburg. Liana J. Fogarty. Nicholas J. Fordham. <laughs> Rebecca Lee Fox. Benjamin Adam Francis. <laughs> Michaela L. Franklin. <laughs> Aiden Ezra Fermansky. Jenna C. Furnham. Blake J. Furnham. Joseph Hunter Gable. <laughs> Destiny J. Garlock. Camden T. Garman. <laughs> Wilfred Duhina Gassman. Ryan Hunter Gavette. (laughs) 
Damien Lawrence Gayhart. Jordan Tyler Gayhart. Olivia Jean Gibbs. Maya O'Handen, O'Hanlon, pardon me, Jambalai, presented by her grandmother, retired Board of Education member, Mrs. Frida O'Hanlon. <laughs> Xander M. Gleason. Emma Lynn Godfrey. <laughs> Joshua Ezekiel Graham. Jackson A. Grant. <laughs> Dominic Alexander Griffith. Catherine L. Groschner in absentia. Jaden M. Gross Casson. Kirsten Lee Gerger. Zachary William Hallett. KJ Helpern. Sydney Marie Hammond. Bridget K. Hartnagel. Molly Jean House. Ryan Patrick Hayes. Ruby May Hagney.
Matilda J. Hendershot. Alexander Charles Harrington in absentia. Abby Elizabeth Herod. Christos Georgios Hedalakaitis in absentia. Aaron Evening Star Hill. Alexander James Hill. Axton Michael Hofen. Rachel Lynn Hogan. Elijah Ryan Horst. Liam Peter Houle. Lily Paloma Howard. Raylin H. Hughes. Jeremiah C. Ehoma. Ozzy Oliver Ingram. Austin J. Irwin. Blake Thomas Jackson. Devin L. Jackson.
Eric Robert Jacobs. Benjamin F. Jacobs. Madeline Rose Jensen. Jacqueline Janine Geralaman. <laughs> Luis James Fernando Kennedy. Sophie Gaetana Kessler. Autumn Elizabeth Class. Marcus J. Lago in absentia. Emma C. Landrigan. <laughs> Tess Garrigan Levenway. Cameron K. Lufdahl. <laughs> Ethan Kai Longo in absentia. Lily Ann Low Temple. Damien A. Lovejoy. Andrew Lucas in absentia. Grace Ann McKay, Lucas, pardon me. Grace Ann Lucas. Anya Louise McKay. <laughs> Kenyon Parker Mahoney. Gavin A. Malik. <laughs> Chloe Elizabeth Mansfield.
Gabrielle A. Martin. Aiden James McCarthy. Emily Shannon McFarland. Brian Patrick McGuire. Nicholas Robert McIntosh. Katie Michelle McMillan. James Daniel McPartland. Isabel S. Mickelson. Hope L. Militello Grove. Samuel Christopher Miller. Jonathan Hackman Miller, presented by his mother, Board of Education member, Mrs. Julianne Miller. Ryan Andrew Mohammed. Danielle Alexandria Moore. Elliot Scott Morgan. Isabel Maria Minch. Cody Ray Murphy in absentia. Delaney Sage Moscato. Rosemarie Marguerite Nicoletti.
Harold Scott Norris IV. Eliza D. North. Michaela Ann O'Brien. Daniel Patrick O'Hanlon, presented by his grandmother, retired Board of Education member, Mrs. Frida O'Hanlon. Julian M. Oliveri. Samuel Robert Orcutt. Callum Augustin Outhouse. Reagan Campbell Owens. Ethan S. Palmer. <laughs> Sophia Andrea Pappas. Gianna Elizabeth Parmeter. <laughs> Emily A. Pierce. Seth O. Pitkin. <laughs> Eric Todd Platten. Jonathan Patrick Poole in absentia. Brandon Michael Proper. <laughs> Venus Osiris Ramos. Rylan W. Rebman. <laughs> 
Destiny R. Reed. Spencer Neil Reinhardt in absentia. Ethan B. Rude. <laughs> Elena Rose Richmond. Alana Riley Nicosia. <laughs> Maya Irene Rogers. Monica S. Roof. <laughs> Madison Elizabeth Rottengen. Jensen Frederick Rudat. <laughs> Naomi Rutkowski. Audria Rutkowski. Caden <laughs> Griffin Sanders. Emma Lee Santavecchi. <laughs> Marina E. Schneider, presented by her mother, Board of Education member, Dr. Jen Schneider. Catherine Gloria Skibelli. <laughs> Devin J. Seacrest. Eric Schaefer in absentia. Abigail Rose Schaff. <laughs> Z. 
Zachary Paul Shea. Michael James Shellhart. Isabella Antoinette Grace Shelters. Zachary Martin Shields. Hunter W. Schuler, <laughs> Kaylin Marie Smith. Emma A. Smith. Jaden Daniel Smith. Molly Noella Snyder. <laughs> Dylan E. Spencer. Olivia I. Spinelli. <laughs> Dominic J. Spychalski. London George Stanley in absentia. Gavin Nathaniel Stava. Brandon Ray Stein. Rebecca Ann Steinmetz in absentia. Catherine Ide Stowell in absentia. Jessica M. Stratton. Maximilian James Sullivan Ransom.
Cole M. Sunderland. Stella Marie Shipkowski. Olivia Scott Tenori. Nathaniel Scott Edward Tierlink. <laughs> Isaiah C. Thompson. Julia Elizabeth Tran. Ryan Daniel Trapp. Taylor Noli Trippity <laughs> Benjamin William Turner in absentia Gavin Charles Twomley Nathan A. Ulrich. Austin Gregory Van Valkenburg. Sierra Sky Vasquez. Benjamin John Villard. Gabriel Isaac Witt. <laughs> Alexis E. Wagenbaugh. Logan Marie Ware. <laughs> Chloe Jane Weber.
Alana Marie Welch. Kiana Marie Wells. Elena Marie White. Riley Patrick Williams. Olivia A. Williams. Sarah Ann Windover. Samantha Merritt Years. Colin Robert Young John. Congratulations, class of 2022. You did it. <laughs> As you go on to your next adventure, remember to continue making us Canandaigua proud. And always remember, once a brave, always a brave. And now, the class of 2022, would you please stand? With your right hand, take your tassel and move it to the right hand side. You are now officially graduates of Canandaigua Academy. Go the other way. Congratulations. Thank you everybody for being here. Congratulations. Have a great rest of your day.